Yeah, hello everyone. I'm DC. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're all well, having a good day or night, wherever you are. Okay, so today I just thought we'd go through some of the food lies of the food industry. Okay, there's the fake food industry, and you know, some of it is legal, some of it's not. But um, yeah, let's have a look at how they press their garbage onto us. Okay. Forward and the food comes. The waiter goes on to tell me, We are proud to present this farm to table, blah blah blah, posh and fancy, blah blah blah, with a side, blah blah blah. You know, the food looked good. I just thought there was something missing. So I reach into my bag and I take out the only thing that can complete me. And at that point, the whole world came to a stop. In the waiter was screaming through his eyes. So that's my idea. So that's his idea of uh, dinner, yeah? Okay. So let's have a look at that idea of dinner. Okay, tomato concentrate from red ripe tomatoes, distilled vinegar, high fructose corn syrup. And if that's not enough, we'll add some more corn syrup. Okay. High fructose corn syrup plus corn syrup. Salt, spice, onion, powder, and natural flavoring. Okay. That doesn't say what that flavoring is, just natural flavoring. So it, does it, uh, is it a flavoring that tastes natural or is it replicates something that's supposed to be nat natural? Yeah. Well, who knows? Okay, so let's go on to the next one. You want to be like the greats? First, believe you are. Greatness requires drip, not like that, like this. The greats aren't afraid to fail. They're fueled by it. Trophies require greatness, but greatness doesn't require trophies. Because greatness isn't about what you've done, it's about what you do next. Okay, so let's look at the uh, what's in Gatorade, for example. Okay, now you have okay water, number one ingredient. Then you have sugar. Then you have dextrose, which is more sugar. Then you have citric acid, so FDA recognized chemical preservative. Okay, then you have uh, sodium citrate, monopotassium phosphate. Um, then you have gum arabic. Now, gum arabic is a vegetable, is another type of vegetable gum, okay? Um, another, and these gum arabics, these vegetable gums, they literally use, there are several types of them, and some of these, they all come from the same derivative of vegetable gum, and some of them are used in laboratories deliberately to induce tumor growth and, um, or actually to induce tumors and the growth of the tumors. Okay, so these are highly sort of just horrible. These are absolutely rancid drinks, honestly. Um, okay, so you got color equalizer, color equalizer, flavor stabilizers, all right, added flavor, and artificial color. Okay, so and you got yellow five. Okay, which is another banned substance in now the, in, the, in this particular one is yellow five and other ones it's red four and all these other things. So these uh, sort of things are banned in some countries around the world. Okay, for a reason. You know, but you want to be great like the uh, professional athletes, you know, pushing these drugs, pushing these um, highly addictive um, health hazards, don't you? So, you know, you have to do it. Apparently. It takes over 40 gallons of sap to make just one jug of real maple syrup. That's why one of these bottles can cost $10. And grocery stores are flooded with imitation syrups that don't have any maple sap at all. In fact, tons of expensive foods we love eating might not be the real thing, including wasabi, vanilla, and truffle oil. The main reason why this happens, it's, it's all about money. Some of this is legal, as long as products that aren't the real deal disclose it on the packaging, even if it's a bit sneaky. 
but often it's illegal, with entire criminal rings behind these counterfeit foods. Globally, the fraudulent food industry could be worth $40 billion. The sort of least end of it, you're getting ripped off. At the worst end, you're literally getting poisoned. So how did fake food take over our grocery stores, restaurants, and kitchens? And how do counterfeiters get away with it? We travel around the world to learn how to spot the real stuff. First up, truffles. Hate to break it to you, but your $15 truffle fries don't have any truffle on them. What is called truffle oil is entirely uh, made in a laboratory, it has nothing to do with mushrooms. Real truffles are pricey and rare, and they need specific conditions to grow, usually in places like Italy and France or here in the UK. Truffles are always found with trees, and they have to be the right type of trees. Um, the, under the ground, the, the truffle is just the fruiting body, so in accordance with an apple. We used to train pigs to find the fungi, but now mostly dogs do the sniffing. Good boy, thank you, good boy, come. So he's told us it's there, it's still in the ground, so do I want to take it out of the ground or not? It all depends on if it's ripe. If it's unripe, there's no point in, in having it. So the nose comes into play and we actually sniff the ground for it. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's probably about 70, 80 grams. Once the truffle is out of the ground, the clock is ticking. It's just sort of slowly going to degrade over time. People have learned how to farm truffles successfully. About 80% of the black truffles we consume are now cultivated, but it can still take as long as six years to grow them. And most attempts to farm the most expensive white truffles have failed which is why they're so pricey and often counterfeited. Since truffles are hunted in the wild and delivered in labelless bags, it's easy for fraudsters to swap them out for cheaper ones without getting caught. But truffle oil might be the trickiest. It's usually just olive or sunflower oil with a touch of a synthetic compound derived from petroleum called 2,4-dithiapentane. It contains the same aromatic component of foot odor. That's why you get that earthy taste and can sometimes smell gas. Anything with a truffle flavor added to it is, is really problematic. Truffle is not a product that lends itself to being either made in oil or steeped in oil. You can tell it's artificial when you see words like truffle flavoring or aroma on a package. The most foolproof though, see it shaved right in front of you. It should look like a truffle, look like a mushroom product. Maple syrup is another tricky case. One food fraud lawyer we spoke to estimated as much as half of what's labeled 100% maple syrup might be fake. Real maple syrup is tapped from trees. Canada produces 85% of the world's real supply but the U.S. set production records in 2022, thanks to brands like Sapjack out of Vermont. The company steam heats its sap. Then machines filter and bottle the syrup, usually within six hours. It takes about 44 gallons of sap to make just one gallon of real maple syrup, which is why real maple syrup can cost about six times more than pancake syrup. The imitation kind is often a mix of corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, and added flavorings. Wasabi is probably the most widely faked food on our list. It's estimated only 1% of American wasabi and 5% of Japanese wasabi is real. Most of it is actually a mixture of horseradish, a sweetener, and a food starch. It's just funny to me when people say like, oh, I love wasabi, I love sushi here. And I'm thinking like, well, you've never had good sushi and you've never had any wasabi, but you know. Very, very yeah. fine teeth. And you can see that it doesn't have a, um, any holes on the back. We're not after really grating the wasabi, we're after pasting. This can cost $319 per kilo. And if you're not seeing it grated fresh in front of you, then it's very unlikely it's fresh wasabi. So what does real wasabi look and taste like? It should be chunkier and have a gritty texture, whereas horseradish-based wasabi will be smooth. And the real stuff actually doesn't have as spicy of a kick. It's more subtle.
Okay, so let's take a look at the ingredients of this horseradish paste. Okay, uh, it's hot, obviously it has horseradish, sorbitol, cornstarch, canola oil, salt, dextrose, which is sugar, uh, water, and natural and unnatural flavors and colorings. Okay, so again, like they don't have to say what these flavorings are they just say that they are artificial flavoring and that, and that could be from anything okay so it's not what you call wasabi and if it was just horseradish by itself that wouldn't be so bad but you know, parmesan cheese there are only about 300 dairies in the entire world that are certified to produce authentic parmigiano reggiano and they're under strict regulations it can only be made in one region of Italy, called Emilia-Romagna. This is the sole place in the world that has all three bacteria needed to give parm its distinct taste. Cheese masters combine day-old skim and fresh milk. They add whey and rennet, then they split the milk into curds. The mixture cooks for five minutes to kill off bacteria and to settle the curds at the bottom of the vat. What's left is a massive 220-pound curd. Cheesemakers dump it into molds and add stencils to identify the cheese as authentic. The wheel heads to brining to form a rind, and then a huge aging room. Se loro ci sono, fermentano le componenti del latte negli aromi, profumi e sapori tipici del parmigiano. It takes at least one year of aging for it to develop these crunchy crystals. They're buildups of amino acids, and they hold the cheese's umami taste. But some will stay here for up to a decade. The longer they mature, the more crystals form, and the more valuable they become. One wheel can cost well over a thousand dollars, but other countries have different laws. In the U.S., you can legally call something Parmesan without following the strict Italian rules for Parmigiano Reggiano. For example, American Parm can be aged for only 10 months. Whereas in Italy, at least a year is required. But grated cheese is even further from the real thing. In the U.S., producers are allowed to mix in fillers like rice flour or cellulose, commonly obtained from wood pulp. They're used to keep the grains from sticking together. The Center for Dairy Research suggests keeping cellulose levels between 2 and 4 percent. But the problem is, companies aren't required to list the percentages of these fillers, and often, no one's checking. In 2016, Bloomberg reported Walmart's Great Value 100% Parmesan had 7.8% cellulose, nearly double the suggested limit. Okay, so she just told you what cellulose is. Okay, cellulose is wood pulp. So if you have a look at uh, cellulose on your ingredients list on just about every shredded cheese in the supermarket and many other products, if it has cellulose, okay, that is wood pulp. You are literally eating wood pulp, okay? Some 50 lawsuits were filed alleging the labeling was misleading, but a judge dismissed them all. Just like Parmesan, vanilla can have some confusing labeling. It's estimated just 1% of all vanilla products in the world are real. Most of the legit stuff comes from Madagascar, where farmers pollinate orchids by hand. The beans are boiled. Okay, again, just one percent of worldwide vanilla products get, uh, actually real. Okay, one percent. Boiled and sun dried at a processing facility. Workers hand massage each pod to release the chemical vanillin. The beans then soak in a mixture of alcohol and water to make the extract. The whole thing is laborious and expensive. So in the U.S., many brands sell imitation versions using lab-made vanillin. It's either derived from petroleum or from compounds found in clove oil, wood, and bark. And that's legal as long as artificial flavoring is listed on the package. Okay, so part of the, the artificial flavoring it being labeled on the package, okay, it comes from petroleum and wood and other products. Okay, they're literally, this is amazing, okay.
just because it's labeled artificial flavoring doesn't tell you what where the source is it doesn't tell you what the artificial flavoring comes from okay so this is something you, you need to be careful about but it could be more dangerous in other countries in 2008 in mexico some products labeled as vanilla were found to be made from the beans of a tonka tree a completely different plant they contained a toxic substance called coumarin that's banned in the U.S. and is dangerous for people on blood thinners. These illegal products were sold all over the Americas. So how can you tell what's real? Many vanilla products like ice cream and cookies get away with using the imitation stuff by just saying natural flavoring on the ingredients list. Fake honey is even more widespread. A third of what's traded internationally is adulterated or completely fake. I feel it's the biggest secret food fraud that has ever been perpetrated globally. I really do. Real honey needs a perfect combination of nature and patience. Bees do most of the work. Beekeepers have to be careful not to disturb the natural process. They suit up with a face mask and full body coverings to protect from stings. This smoker calms the bees, so they can easily remove honeycomb frames. Beekeepers scrape the wax that keeps the honey in each cell. Finally, a centrifuge spins the frames, pushing the honey out of the combs. But globally, there is more honey being sold than the world's bees are capable of making. Only counterfeits containing little to no real honey can explain that difference. Dupes are made up of high fructose corn syrup and other cheap syrups like glucose, rice, cane, or beet. Olive oil also tops our list of frequently faked foods. Authentic extra virgin olive oil has to be freshly squeezed from ripe olives. Most come from farms in Spain, Italy, or Greece. Like this cooperative farm in Antiquera, Spain, the largest olive oil producer in the world. Workers harvest olives from November to January using these vibrating machines that shake the fruit loose. They dump the olives into big trailers waiting to head to factories. This one can process thousands of olives an hour. First, washing off any dirt. Extra virgin olive oil is the least processed kind out there, using no heat or chemicals. The machines grind the olives into a thick paste, and then spin it. Massive decanters press it out of the mush. The factory pumps the oil into storage and finally into bottles. This is one of the most expensive cooking oils in the world, selling for over $10 a 17-ounce bottle. And it's easy to imitate, so criminal rings making fake oil have thrived since ancient Rome. Some fill up these bottles with cheap soybean or vegetable oil. Others mix in lower-grade olive oil, but still label it as extra virgin. You might be surprised to learn, even your coffee could be phony. You could just be brewing up a bag of inferior beans marketed as some more expensive ones. Or it could be something completely different, ground acorns, barley, or wheat. Coffee is big, big, big business. And historically, it has been cut with anything that's brown. <laughs> Uh, burnt paper, burnt corn, um, sawdust. So why is all this counterfeit stuff really that awful? One is just pure economic fraud. If you buy uh, what you think is Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee for $30 a pound and it's cheaper coffee, you've been ripped off. But then there's our health. If your extra virgin olive oil is secretly cut with peanut oil and you're allergic to peanuts, well, that could be deadly. Especially products out of China, Honey has been found to contain uh, drugs that are banned in this country because they're known carcinogens. Breakfast in this house? In the morning, I can use all the help I can get. That's why I love Nutella, a delicious hazelnut spread that's perfect on multigrain toast and even whole wheat waffles. It's a quick and easy way to give my family a breakfast they'll want to eat. And Nutella is made with simple quality ingredients like hazelnuts, skim milk, and a hint of cocoa. They love the taste. Okay, so so-called healthy breakfast for ch for children. Okay, fifty-five percent of it is sugar, vegetable oil. The, now the vegetable oil in it is palm oil. Okay, now I've got this from a website where they're actually trying to tell us that 
this is actually a healthy choice. But they, even they list the ingredients. The, the, the commercial said, okay, skim milk, uh, nuts, and cocoa. Okay, but obviously 55% you know, of it's sugar, palm oil, cocoa, emulsifier, soy lecithin, which is uh, basically toxic, okay, for the, for the body. And flavor of van vanillin, okay, which is like you saw before, fake vanilla uh, flavoring. All right, make growing up, made in all that. Yeah. <laughs> and seed oils, you know, that uh, addicting children to this disgusting um, sort of food that is now that is obviously being promoted as a healthy choice for breakfast, for or for any sort of food. It's it's utterly disgusting.